have genuinely no idea how some of this stuff comes to my mind. But what I want to do is take this old Android phone, load up the YouTube app. I'm going to sign into an account that hasn't been used. And I'm going to set it to autoplay. We're going to start by playing a random cat video. Then we're going to leave the thing all day, maybe more than a day. And see, well, we'll check back in with it and see where the autoplay ended up sending this thing. Uh, I'm just curious, like, if you leave it running for like 12 hours and you start with a cat video, what will end up on this screen? There we go. This account does not have any use. So let's go into settings here, autoplay, and we're going to turn on autoplay. Just to make sure, we're going to clear the watch history, clear the search history, and we're gonna make sure the history is enabled so we can go back through the list and see what it actually played. So let's do a search here, cats. All right, we're gonna start with this one here, which is cats will make you laugh your head off, funny cat something. Oh. This account has ads. Let's turn the volume down here. Okay, so this is apparently a channel that just has compilations of stuff. So there we go. We're starting this voyage with cats breaking a lamp. I'm going to set this phone. Actually, I think while YouTube videos are playing, the screen shouldn't turn off. So we'll plug this thing into power. I'm just gonna set this thing over here and we're gonna let it go. And then we'll go back through the history and see what uh, what ended up happening. I'm kind of curious, the test of how their algorithms work. Like I said, an account that hasn't been used and doesn't have any history on it. I'll be super interested to see what they think that account wants to watch. Okay, so someone's giving me studded snow tires that are already mounted on steel wheels. But I don't know exactly what the bolt pattern is on this. I've been using this measure app and I tried to check the lug pattern, but according to the internet, um, the length of the wheelbase is what determines what the bolt pattern is depending on different years. So I'm gonna try using this measure app on the phone again and see if we can come up with something. Guess I have to be closer. Okay, so we're gonna start at the center hub here. There we go, and drag the line back to this other hub. According to this, it's 9.9 .9 inches. To center. And if we look here in the middle, it says 9.9. .9. Uh, okay, apparently I can check the VIN and that'll tell me the seventh digit. Okay, so this is the extended wagon. So, I'm not sure what that means. Let's see here. Uh, Dodge Caravan. 4.5, it's a bolt pattern, but I measured the bolt pattern I was four. I'm not sure, hyphen. It measures at four inches, but everything says 4.5, LOL. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, figure it out. I'll stop by. Well, me and a friend have been searching online trying to figure it out. Supposedly the long wheelbase vans have a bigger bolt pattern, but they also don't use the 14 inch wheels with the smaller brakes. And this thing had the 14-inch wheels and smaller brakes on it when I got it, but it measures out to a longer wheelbase. It's all very confusing, but near as I can tell, the bolt pattern is 4 inches, which I believe is 4 on 100, or 5 on 100, or I don't know, whatever. I've got to head into town anyways. I need to get some packages and get the off-road chair from the storage unit. So we'll try and see what happens. I know I constantly complain about traffic, but it's Friday afternoon. All the news stations and radio stations are freaking out. They're saying there's like a winter storm that's coming. 
and uh, it's supposedly starting in like an hour and it's going to last all week. And I picked this exact time to uh, go pick up some studded snow tires. So we may end up in a trifecta of amazing Friday weather and uh, the media freaking out. So it could be interesting on the way back. Right now, getting here doesn't seem to be too bad. Oh wait, just said that and the freeway stopped. So we will take this exit. Oh yeah, glad I uh, glad I avoided that. I'm not 100% sure if these tires and wheels are gonna fit, but we shall see. This might be an epic snow voyage. I figure since we might be in for some snow, some off-road chair testing is in order. And my other off-road chair, the one that shall not be named, is in storage here. So I figure probably a good time to come grab it. Hasn't started snowing yet. Apparently it's snowing a little bit south of here. It's snowing in Seattle, pretty much everywhere else. Actually, let's check the weather forecast real quick, or the radar map rather, assuming my phone's going to work. Okay, winter storm warning. According to this, it's supposed to start raining in a couple hours. And it says possible light snow at 7 a.m. Hmm. Well, that's definitely not the same as uh, the weather forecast, but anyways, let's, uh, let's get the off-road chair out of here. The uh, friend I'm getting the tires from has uh, a couple of little kids, so figured he might want this tricycle. I put it back together and I'm not really using it anymore, so. That was the one from the, uh, uh, that was the one from the Halloween costume, if you remember. Uh, I've got a little bit of time to kill and uh, we got a couple boxes from the mail center. So let's uh, go ahead and open, uh, open one or two up. Assuming I can get a hold of them. It's always a battle trying not to uh, leak people's addresses, but I have no idea what we've got going on here. So let's have a look. Ooh. I wonder if this is what it says it is. Oh, yep. We've got... Um... Oh, <laughs> so we've got the Amazon gift receipts. Um, so I can send a thank you note back. Hi Dan, drink up, don't forget to flush. Ha ha, from this person. It is a, uh, <laughs> the, the original toilet coffee mug. Ceramic, fun and functional. <laughs> drink from the bowl. That's awesome, man, thank you. <laughs> so, this is when I wish I worked in an office and, uh, I could have something like this sitting on my desk. Oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> cool, I can get a couple fingers in there. That's awesome. <laughs> so, all right, back in the box. Don't wanna break that. And next, I don't know if I can reach this other one. It's kinda, threw it down here on the floor where I can't really get to it. This one, eh. looks like it's from South Dakota. Ugh. Probably shouldn't cut towards myself or towards my leg like that. All right, we have another box. Some newspaper, all right. This says, Thanks much for your purchase. We really appreciate it. Hope you will enjoy the game. Oh, I know who sent me this. It's interesting though, did you write that note? I'm assuming it was a random Amazon seller that wrote that or whoever, or wherever it came from. I was over at a friend's place the other night and I was chatting with someone and I mentioned we were playing this game called um, Organ Something. Uh, and uh, he had mentioned this other game that looked interesting. And there's one friend 
anytime we go to uh, his place, we always play random card games. So some Parker Brothers French card game, however you say that. Cool. Looks like we got everything in here. Ooh, it's brand new. The cards are sealed. <laughs> always smell things. This doesn't look like it was resealed. It looks like it's actually new. All right, cool. Thanks, man. I have no idea how to play this, but we will learn. It seems like uh, every time this one friend comes over, every time we go to his place, he's always got some new crazy card game we have to learn. So this is going to be perfect. I can show up. I can show up with something that no one's ever heard of, and it doesn't make any sense at all, and we'll all have to learn it together. Um, so that's perfect. Thanks. Okay. My friend just texted me. I tried to reply. I don't think it worked, but... He's 20 minutes out. So, I'm gonna get this unit closed up, try to load this other chair in here, and then we will head over and see if those snow tires fit. I'm trying to remember, I don't know if I've loaded this chair in here before with me not sitting in it. I am in the steampunk chair, which is good and small. So in theory, we should have space, but this is gonna be obnoxious for getting in and out of the van because this chair is huge. Oh, dang it. Come on, gotta line it up. This way. Oh, oh. All right, there we go. All right, the chair is installed in here. Looks like they might have actually permanently fixed this gate. It has a completely different control panel on it now. It's a totally different design than, uh, is my hood open? I don't have the spacers on my hood, but it looks like it might be open. Anyways, they've put a completely different control pad in here now. So I think it shouldn't be breaking anymore. And those buttons have some really good tactile action too. And it's backlit, although one of the lights is out. <laughs> oh, come on. That chain doesn't sound very good though. Well, maybe it's not fixed, I don't know. Oh, the chain's sawing through the, uh, the plastic housing around the sprocket. And I'm sure it'll be broken when I come back. All right, let's see if we've gained any horsepower. This hill right here is always difficult to pull up, especially when I have multiple chairs in this thing. There's always traffic, so you're trying to get out of the way. Eh, it's a little better. Doesn't hesitate now, though. A little more throttle response. Most of the spark plugs being replaced always helps. <laughs> I just noticed the air has changed. There's a little bit of extra uh, frigidity in the air. It has that feeling of snow and the clouds have sort of darkened up a little bit or turned a little bit more gray like they do when it's snowing. Uh, yeah, we're getting some uh, precipitation on the windshield here. It's uh, five o'clock right now, so peak rush hour on a Friday. Even without the threat of snow, we're at peak rush hour right now, so. Probably going to hang out here for a while, do some work on the computer, see if these snow tires fit, and uh, then we'll venture back out of town. <laughs> I think I beat them here. We'll just uh, listen to some black keys while we wait. Just realized I never mentioned the outcome of the snow tires and wheels. They don't fit. Wrong bolt pattern. As it turns out, my van uses the same bolt pattern as a lot of boat trailers and some of the earlier Mustangs, Ford Rangers, things like that. The snow tires were not in good enough shape to warrant taking them off, like dismounting them from the wheel and putting them on other wheels and doing all that. It, it was just one of those things they were laying around and he was gonna give them to me if they happened to work, but not worth the hassle of mounting, dismounting, swapping and all that stuff. Plus, as it turned out, I didn't really need them, but more about that later. Well, there's no snow, but it is raining very profusely right now. It's like 36 degrees outside. So I think I've got a while. I mean, I don't think I'll have an issue getting back. 
but I'm sure it's gonna freeze overnight, and then when that happens, we're gonna have ice everywhere. Now, obviously, this is like not any proper amount of snow. People in Portland just freak out when there's any little tiny bit of it. Obviously, it's a lot worse other places and a lot colder other places, but there's just a lot of idiots that don't know how to drive. And a little bit of snow always seems to shut down the city for whatever reason. <laughs> but as long as you watch out for other people, you're good to go. How did they slide off the road? <laughs> There's a car like off the side of the road there. Well, anyways, traffic's super bad on the highway, so I decided to go over the hill. Council Crest, if you're from Portland. Um, the road's still wet, it's raining. There's a little bit of flakes mixed in and there's a tiny bit, like a quarter inch of accumulation on the side of the road. But somehow people are driving their cars into the ditch already. <laughs> um, yeah. Never ceases to amaze. I think it's time to go play around in the snow. I'm in... Um, this one chair here. Uh, I haven't been in it in a while. It's making some weird noises. I don't know, maybe it just needs to be run a little bit. I still need to take this thing apart, get the motors completely out of it and go through the motors. I think there's still a set of bearings in there that I haven't been able to get to. I tried using some dry lubricant on them before, but there's one carrier bearing in the middle buried between the gearbox and the windings that I can't get to without completely disassembling everything. So we're gonna have to do that at some point. But I think for now we should be good. The batteries in this thing are somewhat questionable. I was getting like maybe three miles on a charge. I brought this thing inside and hooked it up to the broken charger overnight. And it seemed to take a charge. So I don't know, we'll head downtown and see. Uh, my friend's still using a chair that he borrowed from me that has the fairly small batteries in it. and. It doesn't have a crazy amount of range, so regardless, I think both of us should be fine if we're running around in chairs that aren't gonna go more than five or six miles. But anyways, we got a little bit of snow. It's not, I mean, it's mostly all melted, but we're gonna go hang out, see what there is to see downtown. Let's uh, gather up all my emotional baggage here. Oh, actually, I need to, I've got a little pouch that I put down here for my phone. And it's attached to this chair, so I might as well grab that. It's one of these uh, Craftsman tool belt things. Uh, it's designed to slip behind your belt. It has sort of like um, a stiff thing here and then a belt loop. But I've found you can just jam it under the cushion and it holds in place. Uh, let me put it in here and I'll show you outside where it's light. There you go. It's just a little pouch, basically. You can put your phone in and it just sort of hangs under your chair there. So it's kind of handy. I haven't had this chair in here in a while. All right, just fits. Uh, dang it. The fuse that uh, controls the blower motor for the defroster, if you turn it up past halfway, like the fuse will get hot and like start melting. And uh, giving me problems right now. I got it set on low and I think it's working. I'm just trying to get the windows cleared. But uh, I'm gonna have to screw with that once I get where I'm going. I got some more fuses in here somewhere, but probably need to take the fuse box out of this thing and actually fix those terminals. Yeah, I think it's still blowing. That's obnoxious. <laughs> and another thing with old vehicles. Well, so much for there being any snow to play around in. It's uh, pretty much completely gone. Not even sure if there was snow here. I know the outlying areas there was a bunch, but uh, meh, whatever. Still find something to do. doesn't sound very good. Uh, 
Eh, there wasn't any snow, and it's like 24 degrees outside. So we just kind of ran around a little bit, went to a mini mart. That was about it. So no epic snowmageddon adventures. Maybe next week, though. Eh, so they were saying it's supposed to snow later this week or later tonight, but then they changed the forecast, so not exactly sure what's going on. They're usually not very good at forecasting the rain around here. Just assume, ugh, you just assume it's gonna rain. But when it comes to snow, uh, everybody freaks out. In the news, they were like, oh, it's a state of emergency. There's like two inches of snow on the ground. So who knows what's gonna happen. There's this app called Authentic Weather. Um, it has interesting, uh, interesting weather uh, descriptions. So this is only 31. It said it was 27 earlier, so who knows what's actually right, but it's definitely below freezing and uh, a lot of stuff was melting earlier and I'm sure that's all turned to ice now. It's most, the roads are mostly dry, but when I get off the highway in some of the remote areas, it may be a little slippery, so. Just in case anyone does anything stupid or in case I do something stupid, we've got the uh, dash cam rolling here, so. Let's take the voyage back home. Some crazy person that's been tailgating me. I got over and then they went around and tried to get back in front of me. There they are again. quite sure what's going on with unbox therapy there <laughs> um, so there's this new support group uh, something for Tourette syndrome I don't know if it's actually new but I think it's the first meeting they're doing in Portland so I'm gonna head over there I, it's hard to tell on Facebook like Facebook groups are really strange like it's always driven me insane like I saying like a lot it's always driven me insane. People post why they're not going to be there and it sort of buries all the other comments for pertinent details that you might need about the event. I don't know, in my opinion, usually just say you're not going. You don't need a long dissertation on why, but not this group specifically, but just in general for all of Facebook. But anyways, I have to decide which chair I'm going to use. I feel like a middle school girl trying to pick out my shoes for the dance. going to go meet some new people. <laughs> Uh-oh, this is never a good sign. I'm in a disabled spot, and the loading zone next to it has a sign saying it's for delivery vehicles. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this fan here. I'm pretty sure it's this fuse, and it doesn't want to come out of there. Oh boy. Yeah, it's definitely melted in there. Dang it. Um, there we go. Oh boy. Yeah, that's gotten a little warm. Um, let, me, uh, let me see if I have any other fuses in here. Okay, I've got a 20 amp fuse. I think what I'm gonna do is just slightly bend the uh, bend the tab on this to try and get it to connect in there a little bit better. There we go, just a little bit. All right, let's see what this does for us. We can even 
get it in here. It'll even go back in. Still not making very good connection. Well, I guess we'll just have to run the fan at half speed. I found when it's at half speed, it doesn't seem to uh, overheat as much, but yeah, that's, uh, something's definitely getting warm in there. Fortunately, it's not very easy to remove the fuse boxes on these because they're hardwired in. On a lot of the newer vehicles, all the connectors are modular, so you can just unplug everything and take it out, but not on this one. Um, oh, you know what I could do? I think what I might do is I could run a separate relay and just use that circuit to switch the relay. Then there'll be like almost no amperage at all. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be a little bit of a project, but basically I'll just have to dig out the blower motor down here, find the power supply wire going to it, run a second power line, which actually I've got a few of them running in here already. And then uh, we'll just install a relay. Uh, that way we'll take the load off of that. Cause I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix that um, without completely dismantling everything. And then, yeah, that's a lot of work. Well, I was getting out of the van a few minutes ago and my audio compressor headset managed to get itself underneath my tires again. Okay, I've detached this from the other side, the wire is still hooked up, but you can see here how there's a nub sticking out here and not on this side. When I backed over it with my chair, somehow that's the only thing that broke. It fits perfectly in that little indent there. All right, let's make this work. Carefuling. Carefuling. I think we might be okay though. I think it just snapped the ear cups off. Actually, where's the other ear cup? Uh, maybe it fell down on the floor. Oh yeah, it's down there. Yeah, I'll grab that from outside the van. Just looking though, I think, uh, I think we might be okay. Yeah, because in a video a long time ago, I had to repair these. I installed this screw here, but um, I think we might have gotten away without too much damage. Oh yeah, there we go. Wait a second, maybe the battery's just low. Okay, this time I thought I double checked to make sure the camera was actually recording. I haven't had it on for a day or two, but um, anyways, so it turns out these were fine. All I had to do was snap the, um, the ear cups back on there. Next thing we have to deal with is this melty fuse situation from the green van. Um, okay, now the battery's dying. I'm gonna throw a new battery and then I'll explain. The ear cups on these apparently just snap on and off. And that's what happened when I ran over this with my chair in the van. I don't know if I can get them back off of here. That footage I just accidentally didn't record just now, that's what I was doing. Well, I can't get them back off of there, but I got it put back together. And when I turn it on, there we go. I can hear well. Although, oh yeah, we're good. Wait, the left side doesn't seem to be as loud as it was before though. Okay, is this side? To be honest though, this side doesn't seem to work as, doesn't seem to work as well. Granted, I do have a hat on, but these things are really hard to find. I, uh, I got them at Home Depot a long time ago, and you could send these things in to have them tuned to specific frequencies. Well, I haven't been able to find them for sale pretty much anywhere. They're on Amazon for some ridiculously high price. But then, I think it was Sportsman's Warehouse. I saw these for sale. I don't think they do the custom tuning anymore, but they had them, I think, for $85 or something like that which is kind of expensive. I've got a lot of um, sound sensory issues with uh, some, well, we'll say uh, 
structural abnormalities inside my head and loud sounds affect my equilibrium. So filtering out really low frequency stuff, really high volume stuff like that is pretty critical. I looked into using hearing aids as sort of an off-label solution to this because you can get hearing aids that have like a five microphone array on them and you can use your phone or whatever else to tune the profiles and direct the microphones as to where you want to hear and what frequencies and sounds they let in and out. Those were like $5,500. It was interesting though, the neurologist I was seeing, he had never even thought about that for this particular condition. It's called um, semicircular canal dehiscence or something like that. It's basically when there's a hole between your inner ear and your brain cavity and there's like some pressure changes that happen that screw up a bunch of stuff. Long story short, I actually can't sit down and read a book. My eyes have trouble tracking together and following things as a result of this, among some other things. But he had never heard of someone using hearing aids for that. He thought it was a really good idea. Unfortunately, my insurance at the time did not cover hearing aids. I don't know if anybody's insurance covers those. And they're ridiculously expensive, but uh, private market to the rescue. There's a lot of devices now that are being sold as augmented hearing devices. And basically you stick those in your ear holes, they've got microphones on them, and you can tune them to different profiles. Like if you're running around on the street, you want it to filter out the sounds of traffic. Um, they do it in a way though, so that you can still kind of hear things around you, because you don't want to just block out all exterior sound. Like for example, you want to hear sirens coming up behind you if you're walking through the crosswalk. But those devices are maybe 300 bucks. I haven't purchased any of them yet. Well, I did get one set of them, but it was a Kickstarter thing. I wound up getting them and then they didn't work very well. I ultimately got a refund because their project was scrapped and I sent them back, but there's a few other brands out there and whatnot. This fuse is, uh, I need to fix that in the van. That's how things catch fire. <laughs> um, anyways. Yeah, need, it, all that to say, I got these things fixed. They seem to be working when I'm in loud environments and stuff. It's not ideal, you've got a giant thing on your head, but it gets the job done for the most part. Oh, by the way, these are sold as like, um, uh, they're marketed as like a shooting thing. So like gunshots and stuff. Uh, it filters that out, but you can still hear everything else. Uh, technically considered audio compressors. Why on earth do they have hold music like this? It's absolutely hideous. I do believe it's time for follow-up on our phone here that has been playing videos on autoplay for probably about 24 hours now. One thing I have noticed though is autoplay will pause at some point. It does not just keep going forever like I thought it would. So I had to occasionally turn the phone screen back on and hit play again. But let's go in here to the watch history and see what exactly this thing played. History. Okay, so let's scroll. Oh, there actually wasn't that much stuff. Oh, I see what happened. A lot of these videos are multiple hours long. Okay, well. I guess that didn't exactly work. I was, I don't know if you can set up autoplay for filters to play shorter videos, but, so we started out with cats, then uh, cats and dogs, best of animals in general, then pets, then it went to birds, uh, back to cats, animals, then weird things with horses. 
don't know if you can see the uh, the look on that horse's face there. All in all though, there was one, two, three, there's only 14 videos that played and several of them were three hours long. Well, I might have to figure out a different way of doing this. I thought it would be a little more interesting. I'm not sure. I thought maybe it would end up doing something different or stray way off course or play something totally random and different and strange or we'd end up on like uh, I don't know some sort of like uh, underwater welding or something <laughs> but maybe the algorithm is pretty good at sticking to the topic that you have selected well there's that I have to revisit this later and try some uh, different fine tuning see if we can change some filters or something or maybe set up a different watch history on here and artificially make it think you want to watch certain things and see if it follows that anyhow once again, I'm not sure sometimes how ideas like this enter my brain. <laughs> <laughs>